your skin, Big Banish. Hello, Perfect Beauties. My name is Daisy, and for you guys who don't know, I am the CEO and founder of Banish. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my laser eye experience or LASIK experience because I got it done about a year ago exactly today, and um, I wanted to share with you guys my experience because I honestly don't think I would have done it <laughs> if I would have known what I would have known now. Background about my vision, I am probably negative 475 and negative 425, and I've been wearing glasses since the third grade, so I can't see far, I can only see near. And I just heard from so many people that LASIK was one of the best things that they've gotten, that they've done, that it just made their life so much easier, et cetera, et cetera. I actually didn't have a problem with glasses or contacts. I loved the fact that I could wear contact lenses, I'm doing YouTube videos and wear circle lenses and colored contacts, and I really like wearing glasses. But the issue was I travel a lot and when traveling and you know glasses and contacts and all that it's really really annoying and it's always kind of scary when you travel and you forget like a pair of contacts for you not to lose your contacts because if you don't have them in your suitcase or you don't have a spare pair then you're basically blind through the entire trip so it was just a very like inconvenient part of my life always having to wear contacts when working out always having to bring an extra wear contacts blah 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 so I wanted to get LASIK so I only went to one place to get the consultation done and I think that was probably my mistake I should have gone to a few consultation places I went to Dr. Asil in Beverly Hills and they were recommended or referred to me by a friend so I went there and then they found out through the initial consultation that my corneas are very thin so basically what they do in LASIK is they'll cut through the flap of the cornea here and then open up the cornea and then put the laser beam put the cornea back in but because my cornea is thin and I don't know how it got thin it's either genetic or maybe just over time for wearing contact lenses all the time I'm not exactly sure how the cornea got to be thin but they had to do something called LASIK or EpiLASIK or PRK. So basically what they do in that sense is they kind of push this flap of the cornea. They don't cut it, they push it. They put the laser in and then they push it back in. And so the cornea is not completely like cut. It's just more like pushed and pushed in and out. And I was doing some research during this time and some doctors actually recommend doing like um, this PRK or is it LASIK versus LASIK because once you cut open the flap of the cornea, if something were to happen, like let's say a, a ball hits your eyeball and your flap is open, that could permanently damage your vision in your eyes if that cornea flap is open. So by pushing it instead of cutting a flap, some doctors recommend it more than others. The fact is I had to get EpiLASIK instead of regular LASIK. So the first thing that I didn't realize while getting EpiLASIK is that the downtime is really, really, really long. The downtime for EpiLASIK was over a month. And for me, somebody who lives in LA who's reliant on driving and I'm always like working and I'm always on my computer and I'm always doing stuff and I'm always traveling, a month of not being able to see reliably was really, really difficult for me. So that was one of the things that I wish I would have known and I wish was communicated to me a little bit more um, that the downtime and healing process of EpiLASIK was really high. So I basically go in, um, there's about two or three consultations before the procedure. And basically what happens is before the surgery day, I actually took, I just took an Uber there. I was just like, take an Uber there. <laughs> And then they were like, well, maybe you can drive afterwards. I'm like, no, there would have been no way I could have driven back from the appointment. So take an Uber there. They put like stickers on like a piece of tape over your eyeballs. I'm not sure why. They take, give you like half a Xanax so you're relaxed. And then they measure like your eyes again, just to double check. So then you go in the surgery room. The surgery room is super, super cold. So I would recommend bringing a jacket or a sweater in there. And then honestly, LASIK, <laughs> LASIK surgery was the most terrifying experience I've ever had in my life because I've never been in a situation where you could not close your eyes um, if you're scared. So I'm that kind of person who, when I take the roller coaster and I'm on a roller coaster, I close my eyes. Like I don't open them. When I'm scared of something, I close my eyes. When I'm in a scary movie, I close my eyes. I feel like closing my eyes is my defense mechanism. But in this instance, 
you cannot close your eyes, which is really scary. So what they do is they take your eyeball and then they put, they pull it and they put it through like two metal prongs. And then the doctor just puts a bunch of numbing eye drops in your eye. So while you can't exactly feel what's going on, you can feel like little, um, like you can feel what's going on, but you can't feel like the pain of what's going on, if that makes sense. It was weird because it was like, you were looking up, right, in the ceiling, and then there's this like big, like, like black beam, like black spot up there. And then through the entire time, the doctor, I believe, is um, pushing the cornea in, pushing it out, flooding your eyes with eye drops, and then it gets really hot all of a sudden, and then it gets really, really freezing cold in your eyeball, and back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And um, that process was terrifying because you have no idea what's going on and you feel the cornea being pushed in and out. So you'll feel your vision being clear and then not clear and then clear and then not clear. And then all of a sudden he tells you to look straight and then you feel this like beam, this pulsating boom, 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 boom thing in your eye. And um, it starts to smell like smoke, which is the most terrifying part. It starts to smell like smoke that's from the laser and that's in your eye. And then they just put a bunch of eye drops right after to cool your eyes but then your eye becomes really 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 cold almost to the point that it hurts because it's so cold the scariest part of the experience was that I could not close my eyes so even though it was very very terrifying I had absolutely no control what was going on I had to open my eyes because that was part of the procedure so I feel like that is what was so scary about it I know a lot of people are like it wasn't scary it was painless blah 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 but to me it was probably one of the most terrifying experiences I've had. And then they go on to the other eye. It doesn't take a long time. I think it took like five minutes or so. It's kind of like when you're underwater, there's like um, like lenses on top of the water kind of, and you're looking up and then you see like this black beam and then there's like shooting lights and it smells like smoke. It's just super weird. So regardless, after the surgery, I was expecting to be able to see crystal clear because from the YouTube videos I watched online, everybody was like, once the surgery was done, I had 20-20 vision. My life was amazing, kumbaya. No, for me, like everything was blurry. I was distorted. I had a headache. Everything was just weird. I somehow managed to get home with my Uber. I think I had to like ask somebody to like help me type it in, blah, blah, blah. My vision was super, super blurry. I couldn't see far. I couldn't really see near. I could see near if it was like super, super close to me. So I was able to use my phone sparingly and use my computer sparingly. And they then tell you to go to sleep afterwards, which I didn't do, which I don't know if I should have, but I stayed up and I just couldn't basically see for the next few days. Now what they make you do after you get LASIK is they give you these like plastic frames and you have to tape them onto your eyes so you don't end up rubbing your eyes. And the next few days after that, your eyes do start to feel very, very gritty. So the cornea has been like displaced, right? And so the cornea needs to heal, your eyes need to heal, and you feel like this kind of grittiness, almost sand in your eyes, and then your eyes are very, very, very dry. Then they give you these eye drops that you use, these like antibacterial eye drops that you use for a few days after the treatment. I just remember using a lot of eye drops. I remember not being able to see very well, so the first few weeks after LASIK, I wasn't able to see very well. I would say I could probably see like where I could get around day to day, probably after three weeks of my surgery so before that I was still working I was still doing all the stuff I was doing because you know me I just like workaholic but I would put my computer super close to my eyes I wish I had known how much downtime the surgery would have taken because I would have probably scheduled it at a different time or would I I would have made accommodations so that way I wouldn't need to like work all the time because it is really hard to take you know three weeks off work especially if you're a business owner because you can't see and it's interesting because like Let's say you're sick, you can still work if you're sick. Like you can put your laptop, you know, on your bed and actually work and see what's going on. But like when you actually can't see, you actually like cannot do anything. You can't do any sort of work. So that was very difficult. About three weeks after I was trying to drive to a conference in San Diego and I actually couldn't drive the entire way. So the first like signs I got that the LASIK didn't go completely right was driving at night or any kind of dim light, I noticed that there's a lot of um, starbursts. I would see a lot of starbursts 
and when I was driving through the freeway and I feel like they should have told me like you cannot drive until like a month after surgery or like don't drive after this time because I thought it was super dangerous for me to drive even three weeks after the surgery. I was driving and it's just like all the lights, the, the halo of the lights became so big that I couldn't tell which halo belonged to which car, which street light, which sign post, whatever. So it was just super, super hard to kind of see where the road was clear because if there's a car light from one car, but it's spread out like with a huge radius, you don't really know where the car exactly is. So driving was really difficult and I'm driving it and I was really difficult. So I was with Katie who works with me and then we, we just switched turns driving because I just like couldn't drive anymore. And I think that was like the first sign. The second sign was my eyes just became super, super incredibly dry and my eyes are still dry to this day, but it got to the point where it's just, Sometimes when you're not getting enough sleep or when you're on an airplane, you cannot open your eyes for the first, I would say like 20 seconds, which is weird because like when you wake up, you open your eyes. But like now when I try to wake up, I have to like squint a little bit a few times before I can actually open my eyes. I can't just like open them right away because the eyes are so dry. So the eyes became super, super, super dry. I would say between like from the first six months of um, LASIK, they would get super dry, they would get super teary. I would have to use artificial tears everywhere. And now artificial tears and eye drops are things that I constantly carry with me. Just like some people constantly carry, like what? I carry constantly carry a migraine medicine with me because I never know when it's gonna come. And I have to constantly carry eye drops with me. And I've never had to do that before I got LASIK. Dry eyes is definitely a symptom of that. After that, um, the first month, it, the vision started to get better. The vision got progressively better. I would say from week two to three, it got better. By week three, it became kind of the, the full extent of what my vision is now. I can see perfectly outside when it's light and when it's bright outside. So my vision is absolutely perfect when it's daytime, um, when it's light and bright. Um, I have absolutely no problems with that. But now my concern is my vision when it comes to um, areas in dim light, when I have to drive, when I have to drive on freeways, and just in terms of having dry eyes constantly all the time. So let's go to the first thing. So now a year later, after my LASIK experience, I have trouble driving. So I would say that when I drive at night, the lights become very, again, very halo, very starburst. It's not as bad as it was when I was driving to San Diego right after I got my surgery, but the lights just become very, very large, like the radius of the light is a halo basically, like everything has a halo when there's a light. And when you're driving, it's really hard to see again, which halo belongs to what car and exactly what space they're taking up because of the ring of light around it. That is difficult. So driving at night, I still can drive at night. I still can drive on freeways at night, but it is difficult and sometimes I have to squint. And sometimes depending on like what kind of road it is or freeway it is, it can be difficult. It's much easier on like more simple roads, but if I'm driving like, you know, five lane freeway going both ways where there's so many lights, then it is difficult. The second thing is dim light. Dim light is hard. I feel like when I'm in dim light, I feel like I am not wearing my glasses because it, things get blurry. And it's not, it's a really weird kind of blurry. It's not a blurry like vision blurry. It's a blurry where you cannot see the full detail of the color and the vibrancy of what's around you. So it's kind of like, you know, um, when you like edit pictures on the phone where you can like do really, really detailed and then really, really like faded. And then this side is gonna be like white and this side is black. Basically in dim light, it's more towards the black side where I can't exactly see like the details of what's going on. And that's what I mean by it's blurry. So it's a really weird experience. I feel like it's just not as crisp. Things aren't as vibrant, even though it is in dim light, it's not supposed to be, but I feel like I still can't see like, my vision in dim light is a lot worse than it was when I had glasses and I was, you know, looking at dim light 
mind. So sometimes when I go to like, for example, yoga class or like I go to pier bar or I go to, you know, work out or something and they dim the lights and the carpet is gray, it is sometimes hard for me to see what the instructor is doing or what other people are doing simply because the contrast, I would say, is not there. And then the third thing from LASIK is the dryness of the eyes. It comes and goes and it's getting a lot better now than it was. The dryness of the eyes just became so bad sometimes that my eyes are just like bloodshot red. Again, every time I wake up, I cannot open my eyes right away. I have to gradually squint enough and then I can open them. Even if I have to like, let's say pee in the middle of the night and get up, I cannot open my eyes right away. I have to like gradually squint a little bit. And sometimes I'll just like go to the bathroom like this because it just really, my eyes are so dry, it hurts to open them up. When I'm on airplanes, especially when I'm traveling a lot, when I don't get enough sleep, my eyes become so, so dry. It's very, very annoying and aggravating. And then my eyes became so dry sometimes. I want to rub my eyes, but you're not supposed to rub your eyes when you get like LASIK surgery. So yeah, it is a very inconvenient thing because no matter where I am, I have to buy eye drops and I have to use like artificial tears, uh, no visine and all that. So, you know, if I'm traveling, this happened to me on my last trip. When I was traveling, I ran out of artificial tears and they only had visine at the airport. So it's just very inconvenient because you always have to like remember to have it in your pocket wherever you are because you never know when your eyes are gonna be so dry that you can't open them. And the dryness gets very, very painful for the eyes. That said, those are the negatives of LASIK. I feel like my vision has gotten a little bit, like it was super clear, I would say like a few months ago, and I think it's gotten back and maybe it's gonna get worse. But that has been my experience with LASIK and I think my vision is stable right now and I think now I'm kind of used to the halo effects while driving. I'm used to not being able to see things well in dim light. And I wouldn't say my LASIK experience was a failure because I know it could have gone a lot worse but I also don't think it was a great success. I don't know if it was something I would do again. I do think I have seen a lot of great benefits to LASIK. I could just you know, wake up. I don't need to worry about bringing contacts or glasses when I travel. I can just go work out. I don't need to like, you know, change into my contacts, all that kind of stuff. But the negatives are still there. And how much did I pay for the surgery? I paid $5,500 for two eyes. So I think that's about the going rate in Southern California, Los Angeles. I think it's anywhere from three to 6,000 for LASIK. I think that is a fair price that I paid for. So again, knowing everything that I do now, I'm not exactly sure if I would have done it. Insurance doesn't cover it, or at least my insurance didn't. So you do have to pay out of pocket for it. And yeah, that's just my experience. I just want to be completely honest with you with my experience because I felt like everybody's video I watched on YouTube was like how great LASIK was. I felt like a lot of the videos were sponsored by different clinics about LASIK. And I also want to tell you guys that LASIK, I had a lot of fear about it going completely wrong. I feel like a lot of people when they get LASIK, it's very, very rare that LASIK will like get you blind and completely ruin your vision. But I think more of the failures of LASIK are cases like mine where, you know, you do have some um, side effects from getting the surgery, just kind of annoyances and um, nuisance um, that are permanent really to your eyesight. The other thing is I kind of went for follow-up appointments and because I live about an hour and a half from where the procedure was done, it was really, really inconvenient for me to go all the way and um, get the follow-up consult, follow-up appointments. So I went to like four follow-up appointments, I believe. Um, and I was a little disappointed because every time I went, they were just like, just use more eye drops, just use more eye drops. Like that was kind of their spiel. But I don't think there is anything I can do now to change my vision. So that is kind of like the thing that you have to deal with is just kind of the side effects of how the, you know, the result will go. But good thing, good thing I'm still positive that I can see very, very clearly and at 100% during the daytime. So that is my epilasic eye surgery experience. Let me know if you guys have side effects from getting LASIK eye surgery. I would love to know what you guys did about it and if there's any resolutions from it because I would love to know because I would really like to be able to feel like I can see headlights very, very clearly in my lifetime. So thank you all so much for watching and until next time, I will talk to you guys later. Bye. There's a